channeling the spell. This is going to be a fire raga. It doesn't kill somehow, and it kills Nyad to land a kill. You oh my god! Here, apparently not, because she is going for the back line. This is instant casting, but it is. What's up, everybody? My name is Kason, and welcome back to the WDL. This is the Season 4 semifinals for the Rundall League. We are down to our final four players from the original 12, or rather 11, that we had to start this league, and it should be really exciting to see who wins this week. First of all, we have the one seed Edelman PR coach of the 139ers, 9 and 1 record this season. He literally lost his very first battle this season against me in week one. And he took it personally as he won nine straight battles from then, hasn't lost since. He beat Quistus head to head early on in the season off the back of an evasion Moraga strategy. It was an incredible fight to watch. I don't see Quistus getting caught off guard by that this time though, as he is the four seed nine and three record coach of cosplay party. Quistus is an incredible player. I honestly think between these two players, I'd be shocked if this doesn't go to three games. I think it should be really, really entertaining and really close. Even though Eno Man PR is the one seed, I think this is literally a coin flip. I think this series could go either way, and it should be awesome, awesome to watch. On the opposite side of the bracket, we have Chisei, 9-1 record, who honestly has been dominant all season. Has not lost any battles except for one against the one seed at Edo Man PR, and that fight was one of the craziest fights I've ever seen. So crazy that it makes it into our WDL intro. So he has been crushing it all season, nine and one at Hopeless Heroes, but unfortunately for him, he has to go up against his guildmate in Sweetheart, and she has been crushing it, especially in the back half of the season. She's been doing very, very well, took out King Delita in the last round, and is now looking to somehow take out her own guildmate here. Obviously, Chisei won the head-to-head -head in the regular season, but that does not always mean everything. We'll have to see how that matchup changes. So we've got two best of threes for you guys today. I'm excited to jump into it. Excited to find out who makes the grand finals, who will be competing for the Rundle Cup, and maybe in the Season 5 Champions League. Let's jump into the fights. Breaking open the semi-finals for the Rundle League here. We've got the 139ers versus Cosplay Party, the one seed versus the four seed here. And this is an Earth Evasion team coming out from Cosplay Party we've seen before, but there might be another Evasion unit on the other side with this Moraga as we've seen earlier in the season. Paired up alongside the Halloween Lucia and the Gargus. It feels like a full Halloween themed team. I do kind of love it here. But this should be interesting as the entire map is filled with a bunch of scary thematic units. And they are also scary on the battlefield as the huge physical shield is here for Halloween Lucio. The haste TMR being utilized by the Gargus. And I imagine probably a big old Calamity Guard or something similar to be used by the Katia here. This should be an interesting fight. In the regular season, this Moraga put on his dance moves was juking basically every single attack from the mage team by Quistus. But Quistus remembering that says, you know what? I'm going to bring a little bit more accuracy. I'm going to bring my evasion team as well, and maybe I can out juke him on the other side. The guaranteed hit nullification is here for Halloween Fred, and the Tranquil Spirit, the new Dario team, are being utilized by this Lucio. Nimble movement, obviously going to make it easier for Gargus to find angles to find the AoE damage, which could be useful. And the re-raise on Halloween Lucia might be value. It depends, as there is re-raise removal on the side of Quistus. The King Serpent Stance being utilized by the Moraga. This should be pretty much the last buff, I think, before damage really starts to kick off. I take it back. Katia going for a taunting spell and gathering hate. I do wonder if that's planned or not from Quistus. This is going to be interesting. I think this is a Wind Lash from Gargus. We'll see if he has the accuracy to connect, though. That is not a guaranteed hit. I think he's too far away to use anything else. The Drain Flurry is going to start the fight off against the Moraga. That is a double dodge, but it is a kill onto the Katia. I'm thinking if I'm Katia, I don't know if I agree with the fact that I just went for hate up. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. The Dispel Slam is going to destroy the HP bar of Moraga, though. That does way more damage than I anticipated. Toad's Curse only doing 2k from the Halloween Lucia, but she does have those guaranteed hits. We'll see if that can make a difference. The Saintly Healing coming out from the Moraga with the healing power down, it basically does nothing, and that tells me that he cannot hit. 
he literally has zero percent chance or he would be going for it right now the garg is coming in with the bursting light that is a guaranteed hit but there's nullification there for the fred which means she is still fully healthy fatal pirouette is going to be fatal for the moraga but he denies death today with one hp left on the courage halloween lucio goes with the dispel slam 8k onto the win unit is absolutely ridiculous moraga can he find any angle to have a chance at hitting the answer is no he is still sitting pretty much useless not being able to deal damage halloween lucia is going to have to carry this fight she does carry with one kill here and it's going to be ending up Frederica versus Lucia, the Halloween showdown. Who is going to get the better advantage here? Displacer does not break the HP barrier on the side of Lucia, and I have to imagine that the advantage goes to her. Unhappy ending coming in for 5,300, and she is trying to give an unhappy ending to this Frederica and to Cosplay Party. The attack comes out. It does not break the barrier of Lucia, and that is huge because that means she does not get any sort of AP if she hits. The unhappy ending is going to proc the courage, but unless Lucia runs out of guaranteed hits, Edoman PR is going to win this fight. Resilient Stance comes out though, and that gives another courage. Hold on just a minute. If he runs out of guaranteed hits, this could be a problem. How many more does he have in the toolbox? It looks like Lucia does nothing. She might be out of guaranteed hits. Can Frederica somehow heal herself up or get damaged down? That is the question. It's either going to go to turns or she is going to kill this Lucia, I think. 3,400 damage comes down the blind lands, which means she has to go for another guaranteed hit. But she didn't do anything last time. I don't think she's going to go for anything. She's going for a channel. I don't know what this is going to be. It's an archaic healing. And that is huge for Edo Man PR. Because that means that Frederick can, cannot whittle down this unit. 1600 damage. She might have gone again right after. But with the spell of fortification, that is going to seal it. Lucia, being a very smart unit at the moment, says, you know what? I can't take you out, but I can sure as hell make it so that you can't kill me either. Razor's Edge is going to come through. It's going to deal no damage. And Edo Man PR, by the skin of his teeth, is going to pull up the win in game number one of this series. Absolutely amazing fight between both players. Honestly, really good preparation. Um, that was insanely close. The fact that Frederico was able to proc the courage again and there were no more guaranteed hits left, that could have been really, really scary for Edo Man PR. So I'm curious to see if Quistis goes with this evasion team again and just tweaking a couple small things, or if he goes with the mage team. Let's jump into game number two and find out. Heading into game number two, and your one-seeded 139ers are one game away from the grand finals of the Rundall League. But does Quistis and Cosplay Party have anything to say about it? Edoman PR switching it up, going with double wind mages Sodaly and Gargus alongside the somewhat evasive Etra. So it's going to be an interesting battle with the double earth evasion coming out again from Quistis. He might feel like he doesn't have a chance with the mage team. We'll have to see. What kind of adjustments did he make as it looks like that Griever, Griever's Wings team are being utilized by the, by the Etra. Good fortune here for the Gargus to try and get Shell on him and the Sodaly. The Shell is not going to matter a whole lot. Obviously, this TMR being utilized may be predicting the Mage team from the side of Quistis, but Quistis stands pat in game number two and decides not to switch, so we'll see if it pays off. The Dual Veil, Dark and Earth going to get that Protect up. That is not going to matter a whole lot either. Um, but some of the other things that she offers in the tool shed obviously will be valuable. So we'll see how it goes. The resilient stance coming out from the Frederica going to guarantee hit nullif nullify. This could be massive depending on how many turns it takes to get into the fight. But the fact that she's moving off to the side could be dangerous. However, what else is dangerous is this TMR again being utilized by the Halloween Lucio. The chance to silence could be huge. We'll have to see. If there was uh, any sort of technique or preparation from the side of Edo Man PR to make sure he doesn't get silenced, that good fortune does get refreshed though, which means three turns of shell are not going to matter unless that Katia goes into offensive mode like game one. The resist magic is going to come out, and I will say most of these buffs are looking more important from the side of Quistis. I think Edo Man PR really expecting the mage team to come out, and it did not this time. How much damage is this limit break going to do? Halloween Lucio did a ton to Gargus in game number one, but that was off of our Earth Slash chain. This time, only 1300 is barely any. I think he also gets increased AoE resistance when he's healthy. I'm not 100% certain of that. As the defensive footwork coming out again from the Frederica, Sadali still not in range to deal damage, just goes for the momentum here. At least not in range or doesn't have a guaranteed hit ready. As the store coming out from the Etra, she's going to walk across that big old mountain 
uh, and she gets close to the Halloween Lucio here. Gargus going to start channeling another spell to go offensive mode. Windlash comes out, and again, similar to last time, misses on two of the units, but this time the extra bulk on the Kadi is going to allow her to survive. This could be massive. The Vacuum Slash is going to come out. It's going to get rid of that haste on the Gargus. Maybe it was gone already. I'm not entirely sure. But it looks like a ton of HP already gone. Katia just going to probably heal herself back up here. Unavailable pain from the Sadly does barely anything. This wind resistance from the Katia, I think, is paying huge dividends here. As Equistus, even with the elemental disadvantage, is going to be able to tank this up nicely. We've seen before that Katia can do a ton of work with this. As I speak, the Halloween Fred takes out the Etra, at least for her first life. She's just going to standard attack the Katia, and that's how much earth and wind resistance this team has right now. She went for the standard attack instead of an ability. That is absolutely wild. The unavailable pain, again, only 500 damage, and there is just no way that Ido Man PR is going to be able to get through this, I don't think, unless there is an elementalist damage that Gargus can do here. I think he is pretty much SOL in fight number two. This is fantastic. Fantastic preparation coming out from Quistus here as the Dispel Slam will take out the Etra. What can Gargus do? The Windlash comes out again. Only half the HP bar on Katia, and if he can only do half HP on her, she's just going to heal herself back up to full over and over again. In fact, to make things worse, she comes in with the Smile Practice. The Protect and Shell is huge, and Sodaly is hitting like an absolute wet noodle right now. Indoctrination chunks the Katia to half. Gargus might finally be able to take her out here, but it's going to be way too little too late, I think, as the Drain Flurry is going to take him out. It's down to a 3v1, and Quistus says, not so fast. You may have beat me in the regular season, you may have beat me in game number one, but I am sure as hell not going to get swept here. As Counter Cure comes out with the healing power down, it does very little here, and Halloween Fred is looking to try and close this game out quickly. The Carving Carnival is going to come out. 5,700 damage, the blind lands as well, and the death lands. The re-raise will pick him back up, but Halloween uh, Lucio is just going to go and put him back down in the grave. 4,100 damage comes out. Game number two goes to Quistus and Cosplay Party. So Quistus sticking to his guns, not switching to the, mace, or to the mage team. Sticking with the Earth Evasion team honestly looked like it paid huge dividends here. Even with the quote-unquote elemental disadvantage, you can see how much Katia skews this fight with those elemental resistances that she's able to give, debuff resistance as well. She's such a fantastic support, especially into Earth and Wind teams. Um, I think Dark teams is too as well, but it's just absolutely crazy how much she has to offer here. And considering the fact that these are evasion units, Sadali's pretty much forced into running uh, unavailable pain and can't go for some of those bigger attacks. So. Very, very well done. I'm curious to see if there's anything that can switch Quistus into the mage team for game number three. And what is Edo Man PR go game, game three as well? We've got a banger on our hands, guys. The winner of the next match goes to the grand finals of the Rundle Cup. Let's jump into it. Heading into game number three, guys, and it looks like Edo Man PR going back to the same team he brought for game one that won him the battle. Quistus going to the mage team. Now, is this a great call by Quistus by switching back? Or is this a smart move by Edoman PR? This is, I believe, the exact matchup we saw in the regular season. It was incredibly close, but Moraga carried because they did not have the accuracy to finally finish him off. Do we see the same story here, or is it different? That is what we're going to find out. The physical barrier is going to land on the Renan. Golbez, I imagine, is going to go for zone barrier. Might go for a Keenblade. It looks like he's channeling something as the Nimble movement is going to come out for the Gargus. Lightning Blessing for Renan is going to give himself his own barrier, which I believe overrides that physical barrier from the Resnick here. And Zombie TMR is going to come out from the Halloween Lucia, so she's got re-raise. I don't think there's any re-raise removal on the other side. There is Courage removal from the Renan, but I don't think there's any re-raise removal. The Fury Surge is going to come out from the Gargus, so the Garble TMR is being utilized here, and Gargus is ready to bring the pain Law of Refuge being channeled again, so double physical shields on the side of Quistus here. Although I think the TMR or the uh, barrier coming out from Renan, I think happened after, so I think he has both types. I'm not entirely sure on that. Griever's Wings comes out, the re-raise again for the Golbez. So we're seeing a lot of re-raise TMR being utilized today as the Sudden End comes out for 4,600 damage from the Lucia. That's a really, really nice start if they can get through him as the Taunting Blade is 1,100, but Resnick is ready to heal him all the way back up. And this can be scary if Renan is able to attack. He is an absolute nuke. 
waiting to happen. Reign of Rallying is going to rally the troops, the HP bars as well as they are going to be maximized here, and the stats are going to increase as well. Gargas is ready to drop an absolute bomb on the team, though I think he can hit all three from here, but Renan is ready to stop this as well. Who's going to finish the channel first? It is going to be the Gargas. Windlash is going to damage cap the Golbez. He's going to drop immediately. Renan needs to get a ton done back. Chaotic Discharge hits all three. The Confusion lands onto Lucia. How massive is that going to be? Is this Golbez going to break the Confusion? It sure looks like he is going to, but the haste is too much on the Renan. He's going to lap before the other team gets to go. This Fulgurus Thunderblast could be the end of Edo Mampiar's run here. It does not kill anybody, but it's so damn close close to doing so. Golbez might be able to finish this off. The Abyssal Quasar is enough for a triple kill. The re-raise is going to bring back the Lucia, but the Courage keeps Moraga standing, and Resnick with her massive upgrades throughout the season means she is ready to limit break a second time. She was already a fantastic support, but the fact that she can do this twice is absolutely ridiculous, and it might mean game over for Edoman PR here. Halloween Lucia, if she has anything to say about it, is going to try and counter right now with a limit break. Arcane Assimilation going to deal good damage I would think and have a follow-up attack as well 5100 to the Golbez follow-up is 3k but can't find an AoE it doesn't hit the Renan and he is ready to seal the deal Moraga comes in with the taunting blade finishes off the Golbez so it's now down to a 2v2 but unless Halloween Lucia is tankier than I think this fight I believe is over Renan coming in with the sky splitting thunder strike is going to kill the Halloween Lucia but hold on just a second you guys this Moraga is alive are we going to see the exact same thing that we saw earlier in the season with a 1 HP Moraga just putting on a clinic shield breaker comes in for 2500 damage Renan do you have the accuracy this is your moment you couldn't do it during the regular season but the unavailable pain is turned on the guaranteed hit is going to come through and Quistus and cosplay party pull off the reverse sweep and win the series to head into the finals of the Rundall League absolutely amazing series by both of these players Edoman PR crushed it all regular season honestly um, the regular season match and this series was really, really fantastic. Um, overall, from four battles, it went 2-2. Two, two. So just really, really well done by both of these players. Um, Edoman PR for being a rookie in the WGL. Absolutely crushed it all season. And Quistus, I think a lot of people know who this guy is. Has been crushing it in Vizipur for a very long time. And one of the best players that Wotev has. Uh, it's no surprise to me at all that he ended up making it this far. So hats off to both of these players. And congratulations to Cosplay Party. Heading into the second series here, we are trying to find out who will be facing off against Quistus and Cosplay Party in the grand finals of the Rundall League. And it's Chisei versus Sweetheart. This is a Lucis Civil War, two guildmates facing off against each other immediately. The Shells Ovis Limit Break, the Puppet Master. We've seen this many times before from Chisei throughout the season. This is the same team that he brought against Sweetheart last time. Will it pull off a win for him again? It worked out very, very well last time. However, last time Sweetheart brought a soul based team. And this time she has the double ice units where Mirage is used by the last wall. AoE buff here for Leave This To Me for Reagan, and the Black Robed Witch Helena TMR is online for the Fina. So this is going to be interesting. Chisei's Kill Face should be channeling a barrier at the moment as the Obsidian Order TMR used by Little Leela. A smart option actually coming out from Chisei here, predicting some of the ice on the other side. This is the Grifford TMR. You love to see it, especially considering that big old AoE buff coming out from Shells. This should mitigate damage quite a bit. It looks like Fina is out of buffs, though, after she uses that TMR, so she's just going to start walking forward. It's also going to allow the perfect placement of that Illusion buff for Last Ball, allowing him to move forward as well. I expect nothing less from Sweetheart. This is a perfect initial turn rotation. She is an amazing player. Staff of Augmentation coming out from the kill phase, so not only does she have a barrier, she has Health Drain online. She's basically a Drain Force user at the moment. Paired Blessing coming out, giving the regen and the damage up on the Little Leela. And the fight should kick off shortly. The only question for Chisei is does he have enough damage with this kill fey, as the Sparkle Shower is going to kick things off. However, that Wizard Rod is going to get the CT up on kill fey. We'll see if it matters. The Silencing Spell comes out from Little Leela. That is going to break that one-hit barrier for Last Ball and also silence Fina. She's going to be nearly useless. However, this Last Ball is looking to pop off. Can he do it? 
Azure Sky is going to come out. How much damage is he going to be able to pull off here? 2,900 onto the kill fey. Honestly, not too bad considering that AoE uh, resistance up from the shells, but she is going to go next with the energy blaster. However, that's probably not the target that Chisei was hoping for. That was already a silenced Fina. Reagan is going to be able to follow up here and potentially do a lot of damage to these two units. Mountain Dive does a good chunk, removes the protect as well. However, Shells is ready to come in for a clutch heal. However, the one weakness, if there is one for Shells, is she doesn't have a whole lot of AoE healing, mostly single target. Can Lastwall capitalize and get rid of this Killfei? If he can, it could be game over. It's going to happen. Killfei is going to drop, and Sweetheart is in a fantastic position here. Little Lila is going to go for the silencing spell. It whiffs on the last wall. The silence really doesn't matter. And these two healthy ice bros are looking really, really impressive for Sweetheart in game number one. Crimson Blade Strike is going to come through and remove the courage for Little Lila. And now here's the problem. Shells can go for a full life, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be on Leela. No, I am a liar. It's on the kill fey. I thought because of hate, but I don't think there was any more hate on Little Leela. And if kill is the... Uh, number one slotted unit who gears what i just said last one just damage capped her ass she is down for the count azure blade strike's gonna come through and now there is a one hp shells versus two healthy ice units on the other side and she say who won this match in the regular season only one lost one battle all season long up to this point sweetheart is making quick work of his team in battle number one she came in with a great plan this blade flash and light and comes out from the last wall shells is just going to try and keep herself healthy but unless she can heal herself back all the way up to full and get another full life off onto somebody else, I just don't see it. The Sonic Octo Strike Blade is going to come out from the Reagan. This should deal a good amount of damage, I would think. About 4k across that three hitter. And Shells, I don't think, is ever going to get a chance to try and bring back her teammate. I don't know if she has another cast of it anyway, but she's basically just stuck healing herself. As Laswell, still with 33 AP, should be able to get more damage down, 2900. Can they actually get through the shells, or does this end up going to turns? Azure Blade Strike is going to come through. Reagan is going to dunk that shells, and Sweetheart is victorious in game number one. Guys, I'm not sure if I fully expected this result in game number one. Chisei opts for the Kill Fae, a unit that he only brought once all season. It was against Sweetheart, though, and she put in a ton of work that fight, so I don't blame him for bringing her even though Black Rose Helena has mostly been the carry throughout the season. It could be because Kilfe has the guaranteed hits in her kit and maybe expecting Elena on the other side, um, but they did bring the Ice Resistance TMR. It just wasn't enough. So honestly, a fantastic fight for number one. And Chisei, who's only lost one battle up to this point, what does he have for an answer in game number two? Heading into game number two here, we've got Chisei's Hopeless Hero switching it up, not going with the Black Rose Helena, this time instead going with the Bart's team. I know his Bart's hits like an absolute truck if he gets an opportunity, and we'll have to see. But Sweetheart is changing things up as well, going with her patented Starlight Elena. She makes this unit look incredibly good still to this day. The buff coming out from the Sylvie alongside the Starlight Elena, so that double Red Mage working magic here as the Keen Blade comes out from Mont Leonis. He's going to start walking forward. That CT up, slash tech up. The reflex immediately coming out from Lorela, which means Aerofall is not going to do anything. The one good thing for Chisei here was there was no follow up ready for Bart's anyway, so Lorela would not have died. And Uni really doesn't have a whole lot of AP problems, so not a huge uh, issue here. But the Mega Charge coming out from Lorela is almost 4k onto the Mont, dropping the unit attack resist. That's really respectable damage. Mont does get his Courage back online, which is huge, as there's no Courage removal on the side of Sweetheart. So that could be pretty massive if he's able to get a Limit Break off. The Crystal Shine Bright, though, is so much damage. He's now down to 1 HP, which means even if he does get that Limit Break, I don't think he's going to get the heal back. The Prayer of Resolute Ult's coming out from the Sylvie, and Sweetheart is looking in very good position at the moment. The Aerofall come through from the Uni, but he moves too far away. No, he doesn't. He is just close enough to the Bart's. The follow-up still comes through. Lorela is going to drop, and this hard carry of Bart's is ready to go. Does he have the accuracy? He does not. He does not have enough on that hit. The Blade Blitz is going to miss. Starlight Elena is going to juke it, and she is going to dunk this Mont. The standard attack is going to take him out. It's now down to a 2v2, and Sylvie has full life in her kit. This is going to be a bit scary for Chisei here, 
Bartz needs to clean up. He's going to go with the Blade Blitz. 8,600 damage. This time he does land it. Gets behind the Elena, and that is a massive hit for him to try and keep this series alive. Crystal Shine Bright coming out from the Elena, though. Just one shots the Bartz. You have got to be kidding me. And now it is Uni versus two. Starlight Elena just popping the hell off. She might have just dropped from the Uni, but I think this is all over regardless. Chise, who only lost one fight in the regular season, might just be about to get 2 0'd by his guildmate, Sweetheart. Man, she is an amazing player, but I gotta be honest, I did not expect this result in this series. This is honestly incredible. The Unyielding Love is going to come out from the Sylvie here. I've tempered my resolve from the Elena, but this is just buying time from the inevitable Uni. Putting in the work, 880 damage. He has the accuracy, but he doesn't have enough turns. He doesn't have enough HP. He doesn't have enough time to get through these two units. And Sylvie's just going to buff in the background while Elena eliminates one more unit in her path up to victory here. The Prismatic Punishment is going to come out. And God, this Limit Break animation we've seen so many times over the years. This poor Uni just gets absolutely dumped for about 14,000 damage. And Sweetheart... And Fundamental Forces are going to be the second team in the Grand Finals for the Run Doll League. Two quote-unquote upsets this week, guys. I did not expect that. First of all, massive shout-out to Chise. Absolutely awesome person and awesome player. Crushed it all season, but Sweetheart just came with the big guns this week and had very good preparation for this series. So massive shout out to both of these players and congratulations to Fundamental Forces. All right, guys, we know our final two teams of the Rundall playoff bracket. And uh, I think it all went exactly how we expected, right? No, I don't think that's the case. I'm gonna be honest, Quistus and Sweetheart are phenomenal players. It does not surprise me that these players are in the final two, but with how dominant Udo Man PR and Chise were throughout the season, um, I don't know if I honestly fully expected these two to be competing it's really, really cool to see, though. This is awesome to see some of these runs by these players. Having to not only win one, but two best of threes to make the grand finals here is really, really exciting. They come in at identical records of 11 and 4. Sweetheart won the head-to-head -head earlier in the season off the back of her Starlight Elena, but is it going to be enough again in the grand finals? It should be a really interesting watch in the grand finals of the Rundall League. But before we talk too much about that in the next video, I want to go over the bracket here. First of all, huge shout out to Edo Man PR and the 139ers. That was an amazing uh, series versus Quistus. He crushed it all season long. Dude was an absolute pleasure to have in the league. This was his rookie season of the WDL. So to do this well, honestly, hats off to him. Really, really well done. He's a super awesome guy. I've talked to him multiple times in battles against him and uh, I always have a really good conversation with him. So massive shout out to Unoman Man PR. And I can't say enough about the other side of the bracket either with Chise, uh, coach of Hopeless Heroes. Same thing, nine and one in the regular season. Dude is one of the coolest people I've ever met. I've had the pleasure of talking to Chise multiple times. And if you guys don't know, him and Numero 80 are running their Votive Blind Enthusiast League basically right at the end of season four of the WDL. So. Um, once season four of the WDL is over, WBEL will be kicking off. So uh, if you guys are looking for more PvP content after the end of this season, that is going to be out there to watch. I highly encourage watching it and I will be participating in it uh, as a player, which will be really, really fun. So massive shout out to both of these players. I know they're probably bummed that they lost. For Chise, probably a little less hurt because his guildmate is in the finals and Sweetheart. And honestly, she is an amazing player. So. I expect really good things from this series in this finals. Again, I don't expect this to be a sweep. I think both of these players are too good for it to be a sweep. And honestly, um, to not see the one in the two seed is really interesting and uh, kind of adds a little bit of wrinkle into the playoffs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed casting it and we'll see you either next week or in a couple weeks for the grand finals of the Rundall League. And it should be fun. Until then, guys, have a wonderful day.